How many times have you been like, I know what to do. I just need to do it. Or you do really well for a certain amount of time. Something takes you out. Or you go in a downward spiral of your emotions and you just can't help yourself. You sabotage everything. Have you ever had people say, you need to feel your emotions. You need to connect with yourself. You need to get in touch with yourself. These were all things that I experienced that drove me bananas. And I figured out how to feel my emotions by reverse engineering them. And there's something that comes to mind before I jump into this, that I worked with a woman uh, at her studio, at her Pilates studio, and it was after my divorce. And I was like, just going through this like period where I was like, just crying all the time, like over everything, like anything, like a commercial, like something that was sweet or like anything. It would just make me cry. And she laughed and she's like, you're finally feeling your emotions. And the funny thing about like my experience is that I'm highly emotional. Now in hindsight, I realize I was basically triggered all the freaking time, but my mind was also strong. So I didn't listen to how I felt. So I'd push myself too hard and I still do that now. And also I was unaware of how I was acting in my triggered state. So it was like some things on paper I was really good at and I like knew what to do and I could push myself through. Like there were times where when I had my podcast and I had a migraine, I took all my meds and wore sunglasses while I was editing, you know, on the computer. So it was like, I could get a lot of stuff done. I had a strong mind and a strong will. But the flip side of the mindset was I didn't see how I was actually acting and building my reality in my highly emotional, usually triggered state. And then when I started to notice my emotions, when I was kind of removing stress from my life, like with the divorce, and it could actually start to just reconnect with myself. It was like, I was crying all the time. And when my friend said that to me, I was like, what, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so it just is like, has been a journey. And then with like all of these books, I've been recording a lot of these videos here because I, I want you to see like what, you know, like really like how far, like I've tried to fix myself and I couldn't fix myself because I couldn't felt myself, couldn't feel myself. And when I started to really feel myself and then was isolated in 2020, where I didn't have all of the stress stimulus I didn't have the commute. I didn't have the clients that were super demanding. I could work my clients, come here to the office. Like I had a totally different life to where there was space in between the things and there was a lot less things. And so I could notice what was my energy and I was able to like reflect on like what my life was like. And so like slowly people started removing themselves or I started leaving people's life because I could really see how our dynamic was set up on how I was wounded and how I was triggered. And the more I was feeling energy and noticing that there's a mind body experience. And I had this, these two questions that set me down the rabbit hole with all of this, of what I'm going to show with, share with you today was, what went wrong in the natural order of cause and effect? Natural being the key word, because as we're designed, it's that we are the cause of the effects in our life. So I thought, if that's what it is, then why aren't we affect? Why aren't we having the effects that we want? Why do we keep having all these crappy things happen to us that are similar to things that happened previously? That was number one. And then number two was, who was the first perpetrator? And I feel, and you probably do, like if you're hanging out with me, that there was a lot of things that were not okay in 2020 with what the superpowers of the world were doing. And this thing came to mind of like, well, who's the first victim? Because 
if a perpetrator, a perpetrator can only act on what they know how to do, unless they're like a sociopath, right? Like aside from like clinical diagnoses of like having a different brain system going on, like it's learned behavior. So I was like, well, then who was the first person to get hurt? Because then how did we get to this point where it's an international, it's worldwide. And that sent me down to the Gnostic scriptures, which predate the Bible. And then I found myself on a CIA website about consciousness and, um, and astral traveling and, um, a little book that like, you can't find anywhere, but I was able to grab the PDF about the, the continent of Mu or, uh, the story of Adam, which is kind of an account that the CIA has where it's like, maybe the Bible was actually a record of the most recent cataclysm. And that most recent cataclysm is when the island of Mu sank. And you don't need to know all this stuff, but like, basically, like I went through like all this, like underground history that you, you really have to scour the internet to get to. And then also like decide of like all this resources, like, what do you, what do you feel is actually true is none of us were alive at that time. Right now. So in that, in that just like unearthing the stuff of what went wrong in the law of cause and effect and who was the first victim or who was the first perpetrator, I wanted to, to really understand why, why 2020 was happening the way it was happening. And also what ended, what ended up happening was I learned how the mind body system works energetically within the body. And then also creating the 3d experience. And I connected with, you know, with what I believe is my higher power and what I feel that higher power is in different aspects of my soul and my consciousness. And at the end of the day, when I really like sat to think about like, what exactly did I do though? Like, what was my actual 3D doing that allowed me to perceive all of that stuff? And the thing that I did was use mirror work, Louise Hay, in a different way. Instead of doing Louise Hay's mirror work where I looked at myself in the eye and said, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I didn't even buy any of her like worksheets or anything, but like, I know that's her work that you look at yourself and you say, I love you. I didn't do that. What I did is I was like, it's a code. Emotions are stored in the body. If I look at the body parts that aren't functioning, that are dysfunctional and the body parts that I dislike and I look up the meanings of them, that will tell me what emotion is stored there. So when I would find that, I would look at what the opposite emotion was, and I would start to integrate the opposite emotion into my life in everything that I did, music, everything. I rearranged furniture. I'm telling you everything. I rearranged everything that would make me feel that opposite emotion. And the other thing that I did was I allowed myself in meditation to feel the depths of those negative emotions. I just kept letting myself re-experience them, re-experience them to allow an image to come to mind so that I could look at the image and look at what was I was experiencing in my mind because of that emotion, right? Like what my brain was commu com computing because of the, the energetic signal from the emotion and really play out a story of like, who's the victim? Who's the perpetrator? Where am I the victim and the perpetrator? How have I perpetrated against other people in this way? And that's how I went through this whole forgiveness process. And the further I say, like the further I got to the surface of it, the more when I would like see a negative story play out, I was like, okay, but wait. I actually don't have to identify with this and say, and I identify with this. I don't have to make this mean anything about me. This could be just the image that my brain is using to express the emotion that I'm feeling right now versus this is a past life. This is a parallel life. This is something that happened to me in my lineage or I, I was able to release the personification of it, release the ego sense of it. And when we can, um, when we can release the ego identity, the ego identity is the thing that's edging God out. Ego is the thing that causes the separation and not in a bad way, a separation for us to have an experience. Because if we were all just one glob, there would not be much to experience. So separation and ego is fantastic. 
the identification of every single emotion that we have, especially the negative ones, as I feel, therefore I am, is where the ego has that flip side of it that isn't very helpful for us. So the more in the beginning, when you do this, I'm going to share with you the stuff in the beginning, when you do this, you're going to have a lot of personal memories. It's going to bring up your stuff. And in my experience, observing other people, um, you know, that I've helped or just observing people who I'm kind of like on a soul journey with, and then also my experience, it's that we have like three realms that we're going to go through in our own on our own, of our own personal memories. Number one is an event that happened at any age that was just too stressful for us to handle. And the reason why things get suppressed in our unconscious is because it's too much for our conscious mind to handle. If you had to think about this traumatic event, it might cause a psychotic break. I mean, like if you were raped, if you were molested, if you had really bad things happen to you and you repress them, that's so that you can function. But the problem is, is that that experience that happened to your body is still running unconsciously. The molecules of emotion are still secreting from your brain and your vibration is still attracting things that will make you feel a similar victimization And it's also changing what your tissues are doing. And it's changing your expression of your vitality of being connected to source. Like what's being emanated is the victimization. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of, I'm, I'm just, I'm just feeling like I want to, uh, just, uh, make it more clear that it doesn't mean ugly. It doesn't mean bad. It doesn't mean anything. If we look at the, if we look at the very 3d evidence side that when people start eating healthier, hydrating, exercising, they look more youthful, right? Part of that youthfulness is that they've changed their vibration. So if we have low vibrations that are keeping us in a victim state, not a conscious one, just in the victim state, we're, we're more closed off. We're not as open. Like I know for me, like when I started to notice this, like I used to always have a frown because I was always thinking, I was always trying to figure things out to like feel better. And then sometimes like when, when I see myself now, I'm like, oh my God, like I'm out of my head. I'm finally out of my head. So I want to make that clear. That doesn't mean bad or ugly. It just means like, what, what signal are you emanating? Um, The other thing is when we're in the ages of like 13 to 25, because that's really when we are practicing self-abandonment to fit into the friend group. This is the time in our life when we are supposed to be branching off from our parents, making our own decisions and forming our own relationships so that eventually they're going to die, right? So that we have people that are our age that we're going to be together um, for our life. So we abandon a lot of our true identity because we want to fit in because we have to fit in on a primal level. We have to fit in because we need to belong to a tribe so that we can survive. We're a, a, um, a relationship species. The third one is the one that most of us recognize that this is our zero to seven and our zero to seven is when we are conditioned in our culture, in our society, or in our family of how things need to be done. When we are born, we're a free spirit. We haven't been conditioned to the human realm yet. So anything that is our true self that is told to us, that's not okay, or done to us, if we had any type of abuse that's going to imprint on us and that's going to cause different mindsets to form of how you see the world and how you see yourself and then how that unconscious mind is secreting molecules of emotion and how your vibration is creating your reality and creating the experience that you have in your body with how it feels and how it's holding tension when you get through those three things um you'll still like you're this isn't like a quick fix because this is just bringing you to the awareness that like why you why you don't know why you're not getting your results or why you keep getting sick or why you keep having flares or why you can't bring yourself to do the thing, why you need accountability, you need someone to answer to to do it, why you might binge, why you might backslide, all these things. This is going to help you find out the why behind those in a very objective way as if you were doing fitness for energy. 
And that way it's going to be like a little bit less like touchy feely, which I hated all the touchy feely stuff. Like now I'm into it, but when I couldn't feel my emotions, like that just seemed so freaking weak to me. And what I see about this process is that it really helps you take the specialness off of the emotion when you can look at it as like a calibration. So when you do this, you're going to be able to see and experience these memories in a more objective way. You doesn't mean you're not going to cry, scream, get angry, get depressed. It, it doesn't mean those experiences won't happen, but it means that like you're going to be like more of your support system as you're going through it, because you're going to have like concrete evidence and something to work with to support you while you're letting yourself feel those things and let the things come out of your system. And then eventually I'll share with you my forgiveness process. And, um, and then you, you start to write a new story about this from wisdom of how, because you're you and all the amazing amazingness that makes you, you, how that experience was something that you were cutting your teeth on as a soul, having the human experience. And that's really hard to hear in the beginning, especially if you had abuse, but it's something that is, um, abuse of sexual, uh, physical abuse, um, the, the physical and the sexual abuse is is a is a construct problem of how it keeps people imprisoned. Like there's layers of this game of life, the levels that we go through, and sexual abuse and physical abuse take you out of your body and out of your power in a very specific way to siphon your energy. So when you know that and you've experienced those types of abuses, and then you are able to see who you are now, and you're going to allow yourself to be objective that this is an energetic experience on the planet, that's going to help you be like, that fucking sucked. I hate that son of a bitch. I can't believe they did that to me. Look at all the ways this affected me in my relationships and in my life. But holy fuck, like that was, that was the thing that they whoever they is that is part of the contrast on this planet, that's what they use to siphon my energy. What's in my energy that's so special that's actually being someone who's aware and wants to live in their heart and express from their heart and be a heart-centered person and hold that energy for the planet and help that, give that energy to everybody else so that everybody comes back to their heart. Whoa. Whoa. Like that's a really big realization. And I had a lot of like guilt that like I didn't have physical and sexual abuse. I felt like my pain wasn't really like that big of a deal because it was mental and emotional, but like my mental and emotional back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Don't be like this person. Don't be like that person. Get over your feelings. Um, that was a lot for an emotional person to deal with. Like I'm highly emotional. Like that's part of my human design. So I feel like that you shouldn't be like that and you're being too emotional about it. Just get over it. Really made me fucking lunatic, but made me all in my head, but made me learn all of this stuff which is allowing me to now like express that energetic signature easily and show people this is how you do it. This is how you overcome your emotions. This is how you stay balanced. This is how you have a strong mind. This is how you do follow through. And I think that that's really important. And I'm really happy for everything that I went through, um, be not for the experience itself, but because what I believe for the planet, what I believe that we're experiencing right now is is the most incredible thing in the world. Like, look at the time that we're alive. There's so much suffering, but we're here for the shift. Like we're here for the history books when, when energy literally shifted on the planet and caused civilization to change. So it's like, what side do you want to be on? The part that like crumbled into fear or the part that was like, okay, wait, there's free energy. Everything's a mess right now. What do I really want? How can I hold the energy of love versus fear? And then what can I do with that for myself and with other people? And the statistics is that at least in America, the statistics as of like 2018, I think was the documentary I watched 70% of the food in grocery stores, isn't even real food by 2030. This is from a 2013 document I watched. 2030, 1 billion people are supposed to be obese. America is the most 
I think they said the most medicated country in the world. So that tells us people don't know how to manage their emotions. They're, they're binge eating. They're eating a bunch of fake shit. They're not, they're not getting any nutrition and they're so fucked up. They have to be on medicine. And there is a way to live your life, not being fucked up and not being on medicine and not being obese. And what I learned through my life experience and the amount of years that I spent working on myself to try to feel good about myself led me to this. And so the system is very simple, but it's coming from such a deep place. And if you followed me on the internet for any amount of time, you might be like, what is this girl talking about? She's all over the place because I am all over the place because I have all these different awarenesses and all of these different things of like, holy shit, it's fucked up over here and over here and over here. And if we do this, then this will get better. But if we do that, then this will get better. And at the end of the day, what I did is looked in the mirror and looked at the things I didn't like and were dysfunctioning. 